Well, thanks everyone um, for joining us. I know there's people from all over, uh, from probably all over the country and all over the world right now. So thank you for, for coming. I saw somebody is here from Croatia. If you just want to put in the chat real quick um, where you're joining us from, uh, we're in, all three of us are in, are in the Bay Area in California. Um, yeah, Texas, Virginia, Arizona, Indianapolis, uh, New York, Gig Harbor, Washington, all right. Um, all right, yeah, all over the place, Colorado. So thanks so much for, for taking some time today and, and joining us on this webinar. Um, today, we're gonna be talking about Pocket Lab Notebook and, and specifically how to use Pocket Lab Notebook for remote science labs. Um, because I know that um, most of you, if, if, you're, if you're a classroom teacher right now, the way you ended the school year, I mean, you're probably teaching remotely. Um, and, and in this fall, um, it's a little unknown in terms of, you know, what, what your classroom is going to look like. Is it going to be totally remote? Is it going to be um, some version where students are coming in um, part of the time and then working from home other parts of the time, kind of uh, split? Um, or is it going to be, you know, just regular traditional uh, in the classroom? So uh, today we want to talk about how, what are some ways you can use Pocket Lab Notebook and Pocket Lab um, to do some remote science labs. So we're going to model a, a lab today um, you, with Cliff and Dave are, are going to be uh, the students and I'm going to be the teacher. And we're going to go through just a real simple uh, experiment together uh, using notebook. Um, just really quick, is, does anybody know what, what uh, oh, I should note, uh, when you may have heard my son uh, just now. Uh, he's, he might be in the background, so he might make an appearance. Um, so. Uh, Anyway, um, does, do people know what they're doing in the fall? Does anybody have an idea of, of whether they know they're, if they're going to be uh, teaching part-time or, or sorry, doing remote part-time or anything? Yeah, probably not. <laughs> Still up in the air. Yeah, I'm sure it's, uh, you probably might not find out until the very last minute. So yeah, it's a hot, somebody said it's a hot mess. Uh, <laughs> I bet. Um, so yeah, we, we, we appreciate that. What we're gonna try and do at Pocket Lab is really make sure um, we're trying to support you uh, in, in whatever situation comes uh, this fall. Okay, so uh, for those of you unfamiliar, this is Pocket Lab Notebook. So right now I am in what's called a lab report inside Pocket Lab Notebook. This is like a document that I... Um, my dog ate my son's bagel, so you can hear him. Uh, telling me about that. So uh, maybe Cliff, do you just want to quickly uh, talk about Pocket Lab Notebook for a second? Yeah. And you can see my sensor data here is moving around as I go. Hold on one second. Yeah, I'll carry it forward. So Pocket Lab Notebook is a digital lab notebook. So imagine, you know, the science journal or the notebook that you kept when you were um, in school or that you have your students um, used to document their experiments. We have developed a way to do that digitally and we think it's very powerful in a few ways because it's interactive. You can have uh, sensor data or videos or images that you embed into the notebook uh, and then it's collaborative. So anything that um, I do in this uh, webinar, uh, Dave can also see and I can see the work that he does because we're in a lab group and we have sharing settings to enable us to collaborate. And then on the teacher side, they can look at the progress of each student, how far through the activity of the lab report they've made it. Um, and then they can both provide feedback very quickly and seamlessly for doing any of that formative assessment and coaching that helps get your student through that lab activity. So it was, it's been in development for a couple of years, tested through two grants with the Department of Education in randomized control trials, and the results have been very promising. Um, and we're really excited to launch it into production in the fall. Great. Thank, thanks, Cliff. And thanks for everyone for bearing with me. Um, I saw Sarah asked, um, can you break the class up into multiple lab groups? Yes, so you can, you can create these lab groups within your class. And, and those different lab groups can work collaboratively. And you'll kind of see that here in a second. Um, and so uh, just as a heads up, or just a, so, so you can see uh, this, this whole 
the, the, everything you'll see in the presentation is done in Pocket Lab Notebook. In this sort of intro um, uh, here that we have, um, I'll, I'll send that to everybody so that you can click on all these resources and see all these different, uh, you'll get a copy of this presentation. Um, we'll send that here in a second. Um, and uh, so just real quick, our agenda, um, we talk a quick overview of Pocket Lab uh, Notebook and, and Pocket Lab, uh, our sensors. And then we're gonna work together uh, to do this remote science lab, understanding chemical reactions. So we're gonna do your classic baking soda and vinegar uh, reaction, uh, but we're gonna do it kind of in a, a, an interesting way. Um, and then uh, we're gonna talk a little bit about just how you can use Pocket Lab Notebook in your classroom. Um, and then we'll take some questions at the end. Um, so our mission, uh, we believe science and authentic data collection should be fun and engaging and accessible for all students. And, um, and so we make everything try to be simple but powerful. So, you know, a third grader can say what is in the air we breathe and use our pocket lab sensors or our or notebook to investigate that. And then it can all go all the way up into college where you're studying sort of complex uh, geometries, moments of inertia or uh, moments of inertia of complex geometries. Um, so, and then uh, just so an overview of notebook, it, it works on any device. So right now I'm on a Mac, but this works on Chromebooks. It works on phones. Um, it works on uh, tablets. So anything that your students might have at home, a device they have at home, um, it just runs in a Chrome browser. So they don't have to download anything um, and, and they can just uh, uh, get started with it. Um, and then uh, just our sensors, which we're going to talk about. I'm just going to show briefly. This is Pocket Lab Voyager. So it's really great for physics, physical science. It can measure acceleration, position and velocity. It's got a range finder. Um, it, it can measure angular velocity, magnetic fields, uh, temperature, altitude, uh, barometric pressure, humidity, light intensity. So you can do weather conditions and also motion, um, stuff like that. So really great for physics, physical science. Um, and, and those connect uh, to your notebook. And then also we have Pocket Lab Air, um, which is for environmental science, biology, citizen science. It has chemical gas uh, sensors in there. So you can measure carbon dioxide, particulate matter, ozone, temperature, humidity, barometric pressure, light intensity. And so there's some really interesting um, environmental science, citizen science type projects that we have going on right now using Pocket Lab Air. Um, so you can check those out as well um, uh, in, in Pocket Lab Notebook. Um, and then with Pocket Lab Notebook, uh, Cliff kind of already explained this, so um, we'll, we'll kind of just go ahead and get started and you can see how Pocket Lab Notebook works with all this. So um, you'll get this presentation here um, and uh, in a second, or at the, end of the uh, at the end of the webinar, I'll send it to everybody in the chat so everybody can check it out. Um, if you go to Pocket Lab uh, Notebook, that is, um, this is what you'll see uh, in, in your web browser. This is the homepage. So this is at thepocketlab.com uh, slash app. Um, and, and once you go there, you can sign in and create an account. And if you click uh, on the classes page here, um, it'll ask you uh, if, if you want to sign up for, for a pro account. And there's a free trial of that going on until September 1st. So you can just click start free trial and you'll be able to create classes and, and, um, and use example classes and stuff like that. So Cliff and Dave right now are in my uh, physical science class here. Um, so, and, and this is my student roster and I've assigned one assignment so far to this class. And so I think Sarah was asking earlier if you can divide students, uh, your class up into multiple groups. So here I have three different groups um, that are working on this assignment. And so this lab uh, specifically, this is this uh, lab report that I've sent to Cliff and Dave and all my students. And what I'm gonna show you is, okay, how could you do this lab with your students at home? Um, you could send a version of this lab to your students um, and they could work on it independently on their own. Um, or you could, if you're doing some type of Zoom uh, class where you have like breakout rooms and things like that. Um, the st students could watch, uh, you, you could have your class and then um, the students could watch me do a presentation and they could do uh, breakout rooms and the groups could work 
collaboratively on this document. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna model how you might do in a lab like this where maybe you as a teacher have a pocket lab, um, but your students don't. So at home, your students might just have, you know, maybe they have a thermometer, like a kitchen thermometer, um, and some basic kitchen supplies, and you want them to do a hands-on lab activity, um, but you have your pocket lab with you. And so you're gonna, um, as the teacher, I'm gonna, do a, I'm gonna do a part of the experiment where I measure, use my pocket lab to measure the temperature and the uh, barometric pressure change of uh, when I mix baking soda and vinegar. And then the students are gonna see me do that uh, lab and I'm gonna save the data that I collect into their lab reports so they can use that data um, for some data analysis. And then they're, Cliff and Dave are then gonna um, use their own kitchen supplies to do a similar lab to see if they can get um, sort of similar results to what we did as a class. Um, so uh, the, this, uh, just kind of go through the lab really quick. An overview of this is just talking about, um, you know, in your, in your classic, uh, really, you know, your first science experiment you probably ever did as a kid. It was like, you take uh, some paper, you put it into a cone, uh, you make a little volcano, um, and then you pour baking soda and vinegar in it, and it makes this reaction that looks like lava is coming out of the, out of the volcano. You put red food dye in it and make it look, look like lava. Um, so, I mean, I've, I've been doing that with my three and a half year old. Uh, so I'm sure we've all seen that experiment, but this lab, we wanna look at what is really happening um, when the baking soda and vinegar mix. So there's a chemical change, there's a chemical reaction. How can we see evidence of that? And how can we uh, use that evidence to understand what's happening? And this uh, is related to an NGSS middle, middle school standard, uh, NGSS MSPS 1-2. You might not be teaching those NGSS standards, but it's related to um, other standards that you would have as well. So in the first part, um, it, it's gonna ask uh, the students to watch a video uh, that, that is in the lab um, of just your classic uh, volcano reaction. And then uh, they're going to, as they watch that video, um, write down, answer some pre-lab observation questions. And so you can see in notebook, you, we have this embedded video that they're gonna watch and then they can click this answer button here and, um, and give some answers. So I'm gonna actually have Cliff share his screen and so you can see what it's like as the student um, as he's working through this lab. Um. Okay, so now you're seeing the pocket lab notebook from the student side. It looks very similar to the teacher side, uh, but uh, we don't have, as a student, I don't have all the controls that Robbie has, but I can still see the same questions. And here I can enter in the pre-lab observations uh, and then Dave can enter in his observations and I can also answer these questions. And then as Robbie said, I can go down here to the YouTube video and fast forward to the part of the reaction that Robbie wants me to watch at 251. And so if you're creating your own lab reports, you can easily embed these YouTube videos to have your students watch them. So I watched the video and then I can up here, put in my answer and you can see um, the work that Dave is already doing um, in, his, in his answer box. Mm -hmm but then mine will be tagged as Clifton. And then I can read up here, what do you see when the chemicals are reacting? Um, I can say something like bubbles start to form. And if, and so you can, you could see that, uh, you know, one way to do this lab would be, you know, maybe Cliff and Dave are, are working together in a, um, in a breakout group uh, in, in a Zoom or something like that. So maybe they're actually, um, uh, maybe they're actually talking together on a video call, or maybe they're working sort of asynchronously and, and they watched the vid, they each watched the video and now they're going back and, and working on it. But because they're in a lab group, they can sort of still collaborate and see each other's work. Um, or they could even just pick up the phone and, and talk to each other over the phone as they're working through it. So you can still try and create these, this, this feeling of a lab group, um, even remotely through, through notebook. Um, and uh, <clears throat> Yeah, and so in, 
in a breakout room, you know, Cliff and Dave could be actually not only typing out their answers, but also discussing it uh, together. Um, and, okay, so after they would write down those observations, now, um, as the teacher, I'm going to say, okay, we have this example. Now, what I'm going to do is do an example of an experiment, and everybody's going to watch that, um, uh, watch that uh, experiment as I do it. And as I do it, I'm going to have them have Cliff and Dave and all the other students in the class um, write down observations in their lab report. And then they're going to then after that, I'm going to save that data, and they're going to use that data to answer um, some other questions. So they're going to fill in um, some data here, uh, some uh, some uh, they're going to fill in this data table here and then answer some other questions. So um, actually, Cliff and Dave, uh, I, I didn't mention this, but can you um, each add a text box and then um, write down, uh, just type out any observations you see as I do this experiment. So what Cliff and Dave are doing, they're going to add a text box, which you can do this little floating bar here that you see that my mouse is over. That allows you to just add a bunch of different, um, different sections. And so um, they're going to add a text section so that they, you can see Dave added one here. Um, and then uh, and Cliff's adding one, and then they can type in their observations as I do the experiment, and we'll see that happen. So for this experiment, what I'm going to do is I have a bag full of vinegar, okay? And then I have some baking soda as well. So I'm going to create this reaction uh, in the bag, but I have my Pocket Lab Voyager, and I've put my Pocket Lab Voyager inside of another plastic bag, um, and I'm gonna, and, uh, and then I've attached, uh, Pocket Lab Voyager comes with an attachable temperature probe. So if you can see, I attached the temperature probe here, and then I just kinda uh, uh, had, the, had it come out the side of the bag, and I taped up that bag um, nice and tight, so that uh, none, none of the reaction, or none of the vinegar and stuff can get in there. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my pocket lab, this bag, inside of the other bag. And then when there's a reaction, we're going to get uh, the temperature probe is going to measure the temperature change of the reaction. And then because the pocket lab is in there and because the bag is going to be sealed, we should possibly see a, pre a, a change in pressure. Um, and, and so, you know, maybe I, I should have probably asked. Uh, Cliff and Dave to predict what would happen instead of just tell you, but but I just want to show you that that's kind of what's going to be happening. So um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, put. Let me actually connect it. So I'm going to connect the Pocket Lab here. So here it says collect data. Um, and then I turn my Pocket Lab on. And then um, let me show you that again. Sorry, because I forgot I had to show you. So down here where it says connect to a pocket lab, I click um, I click connect to pocket lab. That'll bring up this um, connection screen. And then I turn my pocket lab on and I'll see the name of the pocket lab. I click on it and click pair. And then um, the data is now streaming right into the lab report. Um, so then I'm going to switch. Uh, uh, the pocket lab to measure um, what I want to measure is the temperature probe and barometric pressure. And so you can see these are all the different things that Pocket Lab Voyager uh, can measure. So you could measure all those different uh, parameters there. Um, so now we're seeing barometric pressure on top and temperature on the bottom. I'm going to make this uh, full screen here so you can see it a little better. Um, and then I'm going to put the bag inside the other bag with the vinegar. Okay, and so you can see here, the vinegar is down here, and I'm gonna put the baking soda in. In a second, I'm gonna let the temperatures kind of settle there. Okay, so now I'm going to start a recording, and now um, I'm, start, I'm recording data, and I'm going to pour this baking soda in, so I don't, you can kind of see it, but here we go. Yeah.
Well, the bag is maybe gonna pop. <laughs> I don't know if you can see that. And now you can see the temperature starting to go way down. I'm kind of gambling right now whether this bag is gonna pop and destroy my computer, but I kind of wanna keep it, keep it going because it's kind of cool. So Cliff and Dave could be writing down some observations. They could be looking at the bag right now, and I could be talking about how I could be like feeling the bag and it's kind of, um, you know, and then actually um, as, as a, they could be doing this without a pocket lab. If they had a bag, they could be feeling, doing the, um, uh, doing this reaction inside a Ziploc bag and they could feel that, uh, that change in pressure as well. So they could be writing down their observations there. I'm going to go ahead and click stop. Now it's still going, but yeah, and you can see this pressure is up here. So, all right, I'm going to click stop. Okay, so you can see here, it's pretty cool. <laughs> look at this change in pressure here that we saw, this huge spike. Um, and then look at right, uh, you can see this big uh, change in temperature uh, right at the same time. So that's pretty cool. So I'm going to uh, minimize my screen here. So here, this is the data I just collected. It's right here inside the lab report. Um, I'm going to click save. And I'm going to write here um, example data for my students. So now what Cliff and Dave see is that they actually see, um, now that I've saved the data, they can actually see this, uh, this graph here. It's in their lab report. And now they can use it to do some data analysis. Um, and they can, you know, you can pinch and zoom, uh, click and drag to zoom in on different parts of the data and zoom back out. Um, so uh, um, let me disconnect this here. So um, maybe, uh, let's see. Uh, oh, yeah, sorry. I forgot what I was doing. So uh, Cl what Cliff and Dave are going to do now is they're going to look at this example data here. And they're going to use this example data to fill in uh, this data table here. So I'm going to let them go ahead and, and fill that in. Actually, Cliff, maybe do you want to share your screen as you're doing it? Yeah. OK, I'll share my screen again. Yeah. So again, you'll see what a student sees. Okay, so this is the student interface again. Here was Dave's observations that he made that I can see. And then I happen to put my observations down here below the data collection, but we can, we can move and drag around these cards and put them wherever we want. Uh, and then as soon as Robbie saved the example data, um, I was able to view it in my lab report. And so I, can, I have all the same, same tools, the, the drag, um, and and highlights and then the, being able to hover over an individual data point. So I can go in here and estimate that and then at the end of the reaction uh, it went down to 19.3. And so as you're doing that, I think, Dave, you filled in the pressure, correct? Yeah. So. Oops, yes. <laughs> my mic was off. Sorry. Yeah, no problem. So Dave and Cliff were both, you know, they, although there's, like we said, you know, they're separate, but they're both uh, working on that, on that um, uh, uh, together. And so Cliff and Dave, or sorry, Dave was um, doing the pressure and Cliff was filling in the temperature. Um, so. Put my screen back up here. Um, another thing as a teacher then, as I'm looking at their lab report, right, and so I could go into any of my groups 
Um, I'm just looking at one group, but if I, I could go into other groups, I could be popping in, um, looking at their progress and seeing what they're doing. And then I can also add comments. So I can, any of these cards, I can just click and add a comment and say, you know, nice work. Uh, what did you see the bag do or something? So, um, and then Cliff and Dave will both, you know, they'll see that comment um, pop up in their, uh, in their lab report. So you can have this sort of real time back and forth uh, with your students as they're uh, independently working. Um, uh, and then they, we don't have to do this now, but they would then answer some more questions about the data that they just saw um, and that they were collecting about what they think and how is it changing and stuff like that. Okay, so the next part, this is where then you would, what you would maybe do, you have a pocket lab with, with you at, at home, you do this experiment, your, your students maybe don't have a pocket lab at home, um, but they have some kitchen, uh, you know, your kitchen supplies, they might have a thermometer. Um, and so now what they can do is they can do now their own experiment um, and just with some kitchen supplies. So the materials they need for this is just a thermometer, um, so you could use a, um, yeah, any type of thermometer, a uh, glass one or, or whatever, um, baking soda, vinegar, um, a cup and a spoon, and then uh, it just gives them the procedure here. So they pour a small amount of vinegar in the cup and then they use the thermometer, and then they pour in the baking soda and use the thermometer to um, get the temperature before the reaction, after the reaction, and then the change in temperature, just like we saw earlier. So, um, yeah, Cliff or, I, yeah, so do you guys want to go ahead and just do do the experiment? And then um, we can just, you don't have to share a screen. Um, we can just, uh, uh, as you fill in your data here, uh, you can, go ahead, Cliff. You want to stop sharing your screen so everybody can see us? Oh, yeah, good idea. Here, so I'll stop sharing. So now you guys can see, should be able to see them a little better. Yeah, I got mine. <laughs> I have a really low tech thermometer. It's like an <laughs> analog meat thermometer. Yeah. So Maybe I won't be getting pressure, obviously. Right. Yes. Good point. So um, uh, I was going to mention this app, so I'll mention this now. So uh, uh, something you would do at the end of this experiment would be okay. I measured with Pocket Lab, and I'll I'll kind of talk about that as they're going. I, I measured with Pocket Lab. I measured temperature and pressure, they're only measuring temperature. So an extension to this lab could be, okay, now, you know, I gave you the procedure to measure temperature, go around the house, figure out what you could use to do some type of measurement of pressure. And that's where they could find a Ziploc bag and do, it, do something like that. Or they could do, um, there you go, Cliff is doing his. Um, or they could do a balloon. You've seen, you could put a balloon on top or a rubber glove on top. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. So, you know, one thing as the students go off and do their labs, um, you know, you could, you could say, okay, you know, you have 20 minutes, go out and do, you know, find stuff in your kitchen, um, follow this procedure, um, put, in your, put in your data, and then if you can think of a way to measure pressure, um, like look around the house, see if you can find some stuff for that. Um, and yeah, like I said, you can put, like, the, you can put a rubber glove on top of those cups and then see how that comes up. Um, and maybe, maybe people have more gloves uh, nowadays because uh, trying to stay. That's safe. a good idea, yeah. yeah. And I can see here that, um, Oh, wait, no, no, you're not. Let me share my screen again. Um, so you should see my screen now. Uh, I can see here uh, Cliff and Dave have been entering in their um, uh, data here. Um, and so, you know, maybe I would ask, uh, um, you know, you can make a comment again saying, uh, uh, use Celsius, I don't know, something. <laughs> uh, something I don't know. Um, you know, you can at any point you can go in and 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 tell them to to make a change or give them feedback. Um, okay, so uh, and then here they would just you know read a little bit about here's a little thing about chemical reactions and then um, 
at the end, they can write a conclusion. So they would add a text card, kind of like they did earlier. And they might, and here's like a claim evidence reasoning that they would do about, um, you know, describe what was happening, what do they see, and then um, what evidence was collected in this experiment, both the example that I did and what they did, um, and, and how does that evidence um, support what they saw. So, you know, they saw a temperature change. What does that have to do with chemical reactions? Um, they saw a change in pressure. What caused that pressure? Um, and, and how does that, uh, how is that evidence that a chemical change occurred? And so there's a little more information about chemical changes here and exothermic versus endothermic reactions. And here I've actually linked, um, you can link, uh, in, in notebook, you can link to anything. Um, so here I actually link to an article that they could click on about from Khan Academy, where they can, where they can uh, learn more about that. Okay. Okay. Um, so anyway, uh, yeah. So so that they would um, they would continue doing that. Um, okay. So that that's how you would do this full sort of lab. Um, a really interesting way to do this lab, um, where I'm in front of the students live and I'm and I'm doing this experiment and then I save my data with my pocket lab and they can use that data and then um, for some of the lab and they go off and find things at home uh, to do to do more um, and I'll just show you if I go back to my classes um, we talked about this earlier but here is Dave and Cliff in there um, you can see that their their progression through the lab so as they went through the different parts of the lab I can see what they completed um, what sections they added, things like that. Um, so when you get a quick look at your class, you can see all the different groups and where they are in their lab, um, which can be a really good tool if you're not there in person um, uh, to, to see how they're, or to monitor where they are in the lab. Um, so uh, this, um, yeah, and, and uh, just a quick background, like we, you know, we obviously didn't know that this was that this was going to be happening um, when we were designing Pogolab Notebook. But one thing we did design it for was for if you're using, uh, if you, to, to help teachers do more hands-on science in the classroom, um, you know, oftentimes you run out of time to do things. So we were trying to think if you can do some of the data collection, some of the experimental stuff in the class, and then students can still go home and pull up their phone or whatever device they have at home and continue to work on their lab report and continue to work together in groups, um, then that would be really cool. And that's part of what we've designed here. And so it actually works really well uh, for remote learning uh, also. Um, okay, and then, and then also you don't have to assign students into groups. You could just assign everybody uh, individually so they wouldn't, they, they would just be doing the lab on their own too. Um, so where did I get that lab? Uh, so just the, the last thing I'm gonna show you is just a couple of basic things about Pocket Lab Notebook and where you can get these labs and how you can use them in your classroom. Um, so this lab specifically, um, I actually modified from a version of a lab that we have on um, our resources. So this is the homepage of Pocket Lab Notebook. Up here you can see are your labs that you have in your lab report library. And these are labs that I can assign to my students. Um, and I have a lot more of them. This is just kind of a, a preview of uh, four of them here. And then down here, these are called featured lab reports. So these are labs that we at Pocket Lab have created um, and have put out there for the teachers to use. And they're very much plug and play. So you can, you can um, open them up, send them to your students, and they can start working on them. Um, and then there's some tutorial labs uh, down here that you can use to learn more about Pocket Lab Notebook and how to use all the different things. So this lab that we looked at was this one here, is this baking soda and vinegar. Um, and there's a bunch of, if I click on the featured labs, there's a bunch of different labs that we have um, that you can use in your classroom. Um, what I'll show you that I did, so if I go to that baking soda and vinegar one, um, you're actually going to see something that's a little different. So in this lab, there's actually a video um, of me doing this experiment. And so uh, if you don't want to, or if you, if you can't uh, do the lab in front of your class live, you can, um, oftentimes we have videos of an example of the lab. Uh, we have example data that we've already put in there. And so you could actually send this lab to your students and you wouldn't even have to do that, all that in front of them, or that, that whole 
um, data collection process part in front of them, you could have them watch the video of me doing it, and then they can use the example data that I collect in this video here. So, um, you know, it's it's actually me in the exact same place as I am right now doing the exact same labs. It's very meta, um, and they record that data, or I'm, I'm recording that data, and that data that I record is right here. So there's some data that they can use to do that lab. And then one last thing I'll show you here. So again, we just did this lab together. You might see things that are a little different. For example, this uh, section says try your own. So here there are two versions of the experiment that the students can do. One is the kitchen science procedure, which is what Cliff, Cliff and Dave did. And the other is this pocket lab procedure. So this one, this procedure would be if they don't have a pocket lab at home. And then this procedure here would be if they do have a pocket lab or maybe you're in the classroom and the students have a pocket lab that they can access and you do that one. So um, what I do as a teacher is I check out this lab and I say, okay, I wanna use this in my class. And I go up here where it says view only. I'm kind of looking at a, at a read only version. I click import to my lab reports. And now this lab is now in my lab report library that I can use with my students. And what's nice is now that it's, I have my own copy of it, I can totally, it's totally free for me to edit, um, remix as we say, like kind of just make it your own. Um, so I can go down to that section here where it said try your own. And let's say I am doing this in class and the students do have pocket labs uh, access to them. Then I can just go here and I can just delete this whole part about kitchen science. Um, and if I want, I can, you know what, I want my students to do, to make a, to do some data analysis and make a bar graph. I can use this floating toolbar here. I can add a bar graph here, um, a place for the students to work, do a bar graph. So, um, and if I want to add an extra question, uh, I can do that here. There's a question card. And so I can give my students an additional question. So once you've taken that lab report in from our resources, it's, uh, you can uh, edit it, customize it, however it will work for your students. Um, and then use that in class. Um, I think that's uh, that's more or less uh, kind of everything I was going to show you. Um, uh, and then I got one more thing uh, for these lab reports. You can create your own from scratch. So you, if you click create a lab report, it's just blank, and you can just start adding different pieces. Um, you know, images, videos, text, uh, data tables. Um, to build out these, using these different elements to build out this really um, uh, a lab report for your students to work on. Um, okay, so uh, I'll go ahead and um, take questions. Um, so yeah, is there, let me go back to that. Yeah, Dave or Cliff, or go ahead, Cliff. Yeah, Robbie, there's, there's been a, a ton of really good questions and I'm, yeah. I'm furiously typing, but probably not. <laughs> Probably okay, not great. doing them justice. Um, I, I, let me go through a couple of them that I thought were really good. Okay. Uh, so Cliff answered, uh, yeah, you can pull rosters from Google Classroom. And as you can see, we're trying to, you know, emulate the way Google Classroom works as much as possible to make it easy for you. Yeah. That. Oh, Don't yeah, yeah. We, we do have an, the integration with Google Classroom is coming this, this summer. So you will be able to... Uh, import your, your rosters and stuff. And okay, so let me, I, there's a, an, another one related to this. Okay. Uh, to how, how about uh, interfacing with an LMS and importing grades? Uh, yeah, so you mean like import a grade from PyLab Notebook into an LMS, or actually export, export it to the LMS, yeah. Uh, we don't have that um, right now, but it is something we want to do um, going forward. So it's a little, uh, it's not, it's not on the timeline right now. Um, there's a lot of different LMSs out there. So right now we're, we're, we have this integration with Google Classroom coming, but that's, um, just kind of phase one and, um, eventually we'll have more integrations like that. Good question. Um, and it's, so this has come up quite a few times. I'm hearing this MS team. Um, uh, and that, so then there's another one to about bio. So don't worry, I'll get to the one about bio. That's a great question. Yeah. But MS team are a lot of MS team, Microsoft team, are a lot of people using that? Um, because that's certainly an integration we can do. 
Yeah, um, yeah. The, I uh, we're uh, I think Microsoft, the 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 education suite is a is kind of another integration that we want to do for using like a single sign on for students and creating rosters that way. So I think um, it's it's not it won't be available like this summer, but um, but it is something we'll we'll uh, build into it. Yeah, it's, it seems like a lot of people are using um, Microsoft Teams for a lot of this remote learning stuff too, because then you, you know, if they're, if you're a Microsoft school, then you have the videos and all that stuff. Um, yeah, and, and Sarah points out that it's, it's good, but it's, or it's used, but it's more expensive. Yeah, yeah. that's what we've heard too. Hey, Robbie, another really good question. So biology, so what yeah. kind of biology labs would you do with this? Oh, great question. So, um, there are uh, some great labs that you can do around like, cellular respiration um, with Pocket Lab Air. And so, um, uh, probably maybe not in a Ziploc bag, but you know, you could do it in like a Tupperware container. You put um, your, your Pocket Lab Air inside of it, uh, inside of the, uh, the, the container. And then you could do something like um, uh, doing cellular respiration of yeast. So you could uh, make your. Um, your mixture of yeast and, and sugar, and then um, seal off the box and record data from your Pagala Bear, and you'll see uh, Pagala Bear can record CO2, so you'd see this big spike in CO2. So you can do cellular res respiration. Similarly, you can do photosynthesis labs, so you can put that in there, um, put in like spinach and stuff like that, put it out in the sun, uh, and see changes in CO2 levels. Um, so anything you can do with a CO2 sensor, you can do with Pagala Bear. Um, but then also you can do these other kind of more environmental science stuff too that's related. So stuff about with um, air quality and particulate matter. Um, so Pocket Lab Air does, does uh, particulate matter. So it's really, which is really interesting to see um, how much that changes based on, you know, somebody mowing the lawn or, um, you know, if you're cooking bacon in your kitchen, it'll spike. So all like you, you can, uh, students can, use it to uh, um, investigate how these like changes in their environment are affecting the air that they breathe as well. Um, so, much, so, oh, go ahead, Cliff, go ahead. Uh, there are a couple of questions about Canvas, which are, um, so I'll address that. <laughs> <laughs> it's caught mid-sentence. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, today I'm back. Yeah, was, yeah we lost everything. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, there were a couple questions about Canvas, and I'm I'm lecturing this quarter at Stanford University, and we're using Pocket Lab Notebook in parallel with Canvas. We don't directly integrate, um, but all the students are doing their work remotely uh, in their dorm rooms and apartments and and homes with Pocket Lab sensors and Pocket Lab Notebook, and then we use Canvas to manage the course. Mm -hmm. um, so they work really well together. There's no uh, formal integration, though. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then uh, I see another question about PowerSchool and Schoology. Um, and, uh, and yes, yeah, so there's not an integration yet, but, you know, that's something we, we'd want to down the road. It should be important to say that all the functions and you can you can use it very well in parallel to any of your LMS mm. um, systems, Google Classroom. I mean, we have we have lots of users that that use them together. There's not there's not a particular integration between some of those systems. Yeah. Good question. Yeah. So Robbie, some other great questions coming here. I'm gonna try and get to them. Um, yeah. so so somebody uh Ellis Shiva brought up can so you just need one pocket lab air to show virtually in the classroom, mm -hmm. uh, right? It, it's kind of the point you were making. The teacher can have one, right? And and record the data. But also you can you can get, you know, we do have bundles of products. If you go to our website or you can email us. Um, but either way, there's could be kind of this hybrid situation where a lab group or some students take it home or yeah, exactly. Uh, the teacher does the demo, right, Robbie? Yeah. So I mean. Yeah, definitely. If you have one pocket lab and you're, you know, you want to do this where you, where it's going to be virtual, you can do this virtual thing where you only need one and you record the data and the students use that data. Um, you know, if you're in the classroom, it, it, we, we have bundles that, um, 
uh, for educators, you know, like a classroom set where you can get like five or 10 of these. Um, and, and, uh, and then also, if there are some interesting things that we are working on um, for remote learning, um, so students can get some sensors in their hands. Um, and so one of the things uh, we are looking at doing, which I don't know, uh, maybe Cliff could talk a little bit more about this, is a, is a temperature sensor that's a, um, that's a cheaper device that is, uh, depending on budgets and things like that, could be affordable for you to get some for a class and then send it out to students because it's a little smaller and a little cheaper. So I could see in that case, you have one pocket lab uh, air, but then maybe you have 30 of these temp cheaper temperature sensors or uh, temperature probes that then um, maybe you can have some system where the students can check them out or, or something like that. Um, and uh, yeah, so I don't know if Cliff, you want to show that a little bit. Yeah, we're going to let you guys behind the curtain and <laughs> we, have, we have a big, we have a favor to ask you in the chat. Um, we're still deciding on names for our temperature product. So uh, if you like the name Pocket Lab Mercury, put in Mercury into the chat. If you like the name Pocket Lab Thermo, put in Thermo in the chat. Um, we are still deciding on how to name it. Pocket Lab Mercury, Pocket Lab Thermo are the leading candidates. Yeah. And this is, the, uh, this is the latest prototype. And what it is is a Bluetooth temperature sensor um, with two temperature probes so you can do uh, differential measurements. And over and over and over again, as we're doing chemistry and biology and physical science experiments, we found that we want to be able to measure two things, like measure the temperature of the room and measure a student's thermos design. Or if we're doing the albedo effect, where we're looking at radiation from the sun, measure the temperature of a sleeve of black construction paper and a sleeve of white construction paper. Or if we're looking at the melting temperature of fats or, or things for insulation, being able to do a control in your water bath and then insulating the temperature probe with like lard. And normally that takes double the equipment or you do it asynchronously. And, um, but we found that uh, we really want to do that with, with two temperature sensors. Um, so this, you get a preview of our next generation product and we are, um, this will be a lower cost way to do a lot of remote labs um, that are very rich. Um, you'd be, I was surprised at how many temperature um, experiments there are. I mean, you can look at things like environmental science when at heat islands um, to, you know, physical kind of anatomy kinds of things that looking at how your body temperature changes as you're exercising. So a lot of cool hands-on science experiments that is a good way for you to introduce real authentic data collection with your students. So I'll take a look at the, uh, uh, the chat, see, see, see what, uh, what, um, what you guys thought about the names, but any questions about that? Uh, so you, got, you guys get to peek behind the curtain and this one will be released um, for the fall um, shipping to schools um, in time for the start of, of your experiments in the fall. There's a lot of thermos. A lot of thermos, yeah. <laughs> um, this is a good crowd to ask. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mercury, um, that's interesting. You know, the, the mercury, um, you know, could, could be like the mercury thermometer. It could be the hot mercury planet. Um, but people seem to have gravitated to the, the mercury, which you don't want around, the mercury element, which you don't want around you, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I saw two questions too earlier that I want to uh, just quickly address too is, um, one is, um, can you share lab reports that you create with your, with other teachers? Yes. That's like a really big, um, feature that we, that we wanted to make sure we included from the very beginning. It, we just don't, uh, didn't show it in the webinar, but, um, I can actually just share my screen really quick to show how that works. Yeah, Robbie, I think that'd be good to show, show people. Yeah. It's pretty key. So like, let's say, um, I'm creating a lab report. Uh, I, I create a new lab report. I call this um, uh, conservation of energy. See how fast and accurately I can type on the fly. Uh, conservation of energy. I add some text, you know, some background information. 
or whatever. Um, I add a video, maybe. Um, uh, I add a, a place to collect data, some data tables, et cetera. So I've, I've added um, this really big lab report. It's really great. And let's say I'm working collaboratively with maybe other teachers at my school who teach something similar or other teachers in my district, um, or I have some type of um, uh, a learning community that I, that I work with um, uh, collaboratively. So what I can do up here, there's uh, this, after, after I finish it, there's this button, um, this three dot menu up in the top, it says lab report menu. I click on it and there's an option to share and assign to class. So um, this is how you assign it to your classroom. I didn't really show this, but like if you wanted to assign this lab report to your class, you can pull that up here. If you wanna share this lab report, not with students, because that, that doesn't really work that way, but if you wanna share this lab report with other teachers um, or with other people in the community, or you just wanna like post it on Twitter and let anybody see it, um, you can click the share button and you get this link here and you just have to send um, this link. Uh, uh, you just have to copy and paste this link and share that link to anybody. And it's kind of like, you know, where you share a link to a Google doc, um, you just share that link. And when they, when somebody else clicks on it, um, they will see um, uh, a, a copy of that lab report. Now it doesn't really work like Google docs where everybody's like editing the same document. What, what happens is they get uh, they get like a read-only version of it and they can make a copy and put it into their lab report library so they can work on it too. So this is a really great way for teachers to collaborate. And one thing we wanna build is, you know, let's not reinvent the wheel. If somebody makes a really, really great lab um, for conservation of energy, share that with people in your learning community, um, share that with other teachers. Uh, we have a, share that on a Facebook group, the Science is Cool Facebook group. Um, that uh, we're part of um, and, and let people use that and collaborate um, that way. So yeah, you just copy, like if I, you just need that link. Um, I could actually send this link in the chat <laughs> and you can pull it up um, if you want, or it'll probably just be easier if I do this. But if I, um, if I just go to that link, now I have a kind of a read only version of it. Um, and uh, I can't, I'm, I'm not logged in as that same user anymore. So I can't do anything with it until I import it into my lab reports and then I get a, a copy of it. So it's gonna ask me to log in there. Um, so, so yeah, so use that share button and then send that link to other teachers. Um, so we imagine, you know, if you're teaching with a few physics teachers at your school or biology teachers, you can collaborate on that stuff. Um, and then the other, question I saw, actually I should have kept sharing my screen for this, um, was just can, uh, can data from other sensors, other competitors, like, or other brand uh, sensors uh, be adapted and used with Pocket Lab Notebook, um, kind of like Science Journal? Um, not, not directly, like so they, they don't connect um, like via Bluetooth into, into um, Pocket Lab Notebook, but uh, you can import any CSV file and make a graph out of that. So uh, in that same place where you collect data, um, uh, there's a button that says import CSV. And so if you are, you know, if, if you've got uh, temperature probes from other that, that don't connect with Pocket Lab Voyager, or sorry, with Pocket Lab Notebook, um, you can get the CSV, you can collect data with those and then get that CSV file. And then right here, instead of where it says connect to Pocket Lab, instead of clicking there, if you click import data, um, you then would um, pull up a CSV file from your computer and you could then get a graph of whatever um, uh, of the data that with the other sensor that you may have used. Um, okay, so any other questions? Um, I know it's 11, so people um, feel free to, you know, obviously jump off, but if other people have more questions, you know, we'll stick on and um, answer people until until there are no more. So if we missed one of your questions earlier, feel free to post it again in the chat um, so, we can, so we can answer it. Okay. Thank you everyone. Yeah, yeah thanks. Th yeah, thanks so much and uh, we appreciate it. Oh, and one more thing, if you have any questions at all, uh, email us at support at the pocket lab .com, um, and uh, I answer all those emails, so I'll be able to help you out. So just 
any questions you have. Um, we can we can stick around for a yeah. while if anyone wants to stay on and ask questions. There's some good ones here. Uh, I saw a, a, a self-cleaning oven um, like particulates question. I, I, I haven't tried that, but maybe you guys could speculate on that. It's an interesting question. I don't know. Cliff, what do you think? Oh, see. Oh, Cliff is frozen. frozen. Oh, wait, do you, wait. What, do you, what do you think of a self-cleaning oven? Do you think you'd get some particulates with Pago Liber from that? Yes, definitely. <laughs> I think if you could smell it, you're probably going to also get particulates. Yeah. Yeah. But that would be a great test. I mean, the the cool thing about Pocket Lab Air is, is a lot of people don't, you don't know the answer to that. So you can just very quickly go find out. Uh, I would, don't place it in the oven, no. <laughs> Please. Um, and then I saw cellular res respiration of, from animals. Yeah, I think you can do like crickets. I haven't actually done it yet, um, but that is one of the labs I, we're actually, we want to write into the resources is one with like crickets and doing cellular respiration. Um, so you could do cellular respiration of animals. Um, and the one, that was one of the labs I planned to write up before, um, yeah, before the global pandemic. Um, Quick one, Robbie, will the attendees be able to rewatch this video? And then also, uh, I saw somebody asked too, uh, the, copy of the presentation. Yeah, I'll send the links actually to these lab reports. Uh, I might be, am I frozen? Okay. Um, I'll send the, I'll send the uh, links to these lab reports, um, the one uh, that we did together uh, with the baking soda and vinegar and also the, like the intro one with all the information you'll need. Um, I'll send that out as well in an email uh, tomorrow to everybody who's registered. Um, and somebody asked about licensing, uh, so yeah, it's a free, there's a free trial going on right now. Um, normally the free trials are 30 days, but it's going on all summer. So you, so you have it. Okay, it's okay, bud. Um, he's getting into the pantry behind me. Um, you, you uh, the, the 30 day trial is extended until September 1st. And then it is a, it's a yearly uh, license that's renewed every year. Um, and other, yeah, other questions? Um, uh, oh, Cliff, you're answering that. Um, yeah, Cliff, yeah. Uh, there was a question put into Q&A about um, so the, the pro version um, versus uh, what we call now the light version of Pocket Lab Notebook and um, about classes and rosters. Do you want to ask? Uh, um, it says in the pro version, can I, that's the only version I can create classes and rosters and track student progress, correct? Yeah, progress. yes. So the there's a light, yeah, Pocket Lab Notebook light is the free version and you can record and save data. Um, like just your own kind of personal data, like with a pocket lab. And then um, you can also uh, create lab reports. So kind of for your own individual use, um, it's, it's free. Um, but then when you want to create classes and have student rosters, um, then, then you get the pro version for that. Um, and then with the pro version, uh, you can create uh, student accounts, like 200 student accounts, and they can all, um, then all the students can use it. Um, yes, uh, Kiki asked, will we get a video? Yeah, we'll get the, um, we'll send a video of this uh, presentation uh, tomorrow. Um, and, oh, somebody, is the, your, the email is, um, here, I'll type it into the chat. Somebody asked what our email is. I put it in, Robbie. Oh, okay. There's, yeah, there's a couple of different emails. Contact at the Pocket Lab, support at the Pocket Lab. Oh, dang. Bills at the Pocket Lab. We, we all see all those. Yeah. They go to the same place. Okay. Um, yeah, well, oh, sorry, do we get to meet him? This, well, Robert, do you want He's to come? He's cute. Up? He's can really cute. Yeah. Come here.
Oh, some dinosaur? Yeah. So maybe you, you heard him, but here he is. Um, 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 this is um. Elishima, we're in San, located in San Jose, uh, but as you can see, we're all working remotely uh, because of the, the COVID-19. Right. Um, but you know, when we were back, if you're in the, you mentioned you're in the Bay Area, you're welcome to visit our office. Uh, I don't know when we're gonna be able to do that again. We'd love to have teachers come. But email us, so you had a lot of great questions. I wanna make sure we answered them for you and we can, you know, we could do some more demos or webinars for anybody uh, who needs it. Just email us or reach out to us. Yeah, I do a lot of video calls for people who are um, just are interested in, you know, one-on-one -on -one video calls and showing, walking you through different things with notebooks, so let us know. You know, um, just a, a last little uh, thing that you can leverage. We, we are doing virtual science conferences. Uh, we had one on April 2nd, we had one on May 21st, and the next one is on July 8th. It's a day-long conference. It's gonna be focused on remote learning. Um, Pocket Lab is just a small presentation. It's a day long of different experts and, and vendors and, and who have solutions for this. It's a free conference. You're welcome to attend. Uh, there will be a link up on our website. If you're on our email list, we'll let you know. Um, let me, I'm going to put the website right here. Oh, am I not? There. If everybody can say, uh, science is cool, S-C-I-C. Um, so the keynote for July 8th is Neil deGrasse Tyson. So it's, it's a really cool conference. We had uh, 11,000 people sign up to the last one. So it's a giant, giant conference. You're all obviously welcome. It's free. You can attend any part of it. Uh, we'll pre there'll be a pocket lab presentation. We'll be talking about remote learning. We have panels. We have all kinds of cool things. So yeah, we had both. We had Paul Anderson. That was great, actually. Um, so he won't be at the next one. We had him at the last two. Uh, so we need to switch some people out. But um, yeah, you're all welcome there. We'll be talking about a lot of remote learning issues. And then also you can, uh, there is a Facebook group and I'm gonna put that here as well that you can join where there's already about 3,700 teachers signed up to this and they just signed up from the last conference. So it's literally two weeks ago. So it's, it's a huge group already. And there's a lot of discussion going on here about remote learning and stuff that works and so on. By all means, feel free to join. If to sign up, we'll, we, we pretty much let any teachers in. Uh, so take a look at that as well. Um, and then I, I put in the presentation, uh, link to the presentation from today. I'll send this tomorrow on the email, but here it is again. Um, that, that, uh, that has some links and stuff in there that you will find helpful. And then um, I'll also send uh, the lab report as well in a second. Um, okay, well, any other, any other questions? Oh, uh, link to the conference. The conference not loading. Uh, did I type it wrong? Hmm. Oh, maybe. Uh, maybe put in the WW. Yeah, yeah it's not loading either. Well, um, hang on. That's a good. I have no idea why it's not loading. Um, What did I do? Try that one. There you go. Thanks for pointing that out. Not, not sure what I did wrong. Okay. Well, <laughs> any, okay. Well, I think, I think we're going to get going. Um, so thanks again. Uh, and, uh, let us, yeah, just send us an email if you have any questions. Thanks again.